All right, I think we are live. What's going on, everyone? Jay here from Texas Cloud Town, back again with a weekend wisdom vape vlog. And I got my man over there, Mr. Shane what? Oakley. What's up, everybody? So first, we're going to go through, we're going to talk about what we're vaping on and show everyone a little bit of our setups and everything. And then after that, we'll get into some vapey topics and start talking about some good advocacy stuff. Mr. Shane, he's a big advocate. You don't see him doing any reviews. He's just a consume, consumer, but yet he cares about this industry. So it's one of the big reasons why I wanted him on here. So first off, actually, you know what, Shane? You go ahead and start it off. Okay, no problem. Well, I've uh, got the uh, Mr. Just Right Edition MDX with the uh, dead goat on top. In there, got that uh, shamrock cookie from Sad Boy. I got the profile unity on the Shogun, and in there got some Paradigm Nilla Killa. Uh, of course, I have my Dreamer Ardent combo with the let's see, that's got Cookie Twist from the Twist line, and Keen with the Axial. Nice. All murdered out. And in there, my all day vape merge transmission. And let's see, got my Amit MTL on the Armor Pro. And thanks to Sean Typhon, I have now switched over from Salt Nick to 12 milligram free nice. base. That is, uh, that's called the Final Stand Strawberry Lemonade. And that's from Paradigm Distro also. And then there's a couple of pods laying around, a little fit and a zero. Both of those got some of this uh, Solace Mint. I'm just trying to burn through the last of that. And then I'll switch over to more free base. Nice. Yeah, that's one thing I really did was switch over to free base. And I've actually kind of liked it a little better. It's not as, it's, 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 e it's easier to find for me. Right. So that's one reason yes. why I've really been liking it. Yeah, I'm not coughing near as much. I started coughing a lot from the salt in it, just mm. from taking in so much. And I get satisfied quicker even with the uh, the free base. Yeah, and that's one thing I noticed too is, or one other thing I noticed was I was picking up my pod system a lot. Like I'd be driving home and I have something like the Unity next to me, and I'd grab my pod system and start vaping on it. And mm -hmm. I'm like, why am I doing that when I'm not getting any flavor from it? So yeah, like, this, this is this is dumb. So I switched over to free base, and I've loved it ever since. Oh yeah. All right, so I got the profile unity for mr joel just right one and with the uh it's on top of the um uh, warlocks hammer from the gathering vapor mr mark and inside that i got some blue berry jam sad boy uh cookie gotta go matchy matchy with the juice R uh the rta and the mod next i got the turk v2 on top of my dreamer le number 10 of 10 and inside that, I got the Unicorn Tears from Sad Boy. Next is something I just got in, and I've really been loving it. Thank you to my lovely fiance for getting this for me. I got the <laughs> new Purge. Or it's not new, but it's a Purge uh, 2700 Twisted, and nice. I've just loved it ever since. And on top of that, I got the Apocalypse 24. And uh, inside that, I got some Sad Boy Cookie Butter. Thank you, Mr. Frames Jank. When I see you in chat, number one over there. Thank you for recommending that to me. That's something that's really good. I've really been liking it. Another one I got is I got the, uh, I think it's the Riot. can't remember who it's from, but it's uh, a collaboration between uh, Anarchist. And then I got the On Top of the Saint. And I've really been liking this. This is an older RDA, but I've, I've probably been using this more than anything else besides the Turk. And inside that, I got this custard cookie from Sad Boy. I've been really looking for a new custard flavor. I'm trying to experience all these new custard flavors, and I haven't really had a good one in a while besides Vaptasia. And then I picked this up, and I've really been liking it. And I got that also inside of my Ocula that I just got in on top of the Kennedy 20, uh, 21. And I haven't really been liking the Ocula lately. I need to mess around with it a little bit more and try to see – what I can do to fiddle with that and get it to where I like it. But yeah, so that's what I'm vaping on. Uh, oh, and also inside the Ocula, I have the uh, custard cookie, if I didn't mention that. So 
first off, I want to talk to Shane about how you got started in vaping and what's kind of led you down the road to becoming a big advocate. Because, I mean, I see you in Discord all the time. If there's a vapey topic like that, you're one of the first people to jump in there and uh, voice your opinion. Even if you feel like the person is right or wrong, you're always there to debate about it because this is stuff we need. We need people to debate about what's actually going on because there's some topics that I agree with that other people's might, and there's some topics that you might agree with. So uh, first off, let, uh, let, us, let us know who you are and kind of what you do and what you do for the community and then how you got started in vaping, my friend. Well, my name's Shane Oakley, if you don't know me. Uh, a lot of people, you know, I've been on a couple of other shows and stuff. Uh, but got into vaping just because I got tired of smoking. I stank all the time. You know, my, I had bad breath all the time. And I thought there's got to be something else. You know, I'm, I'm getting into my 40s and I know I had to make a change. Uh, so just kind of started looking into vaping. I had done it before back in 2014. Uh, kind of didn't work out. You know, it worked, but it didn't work. So ended up going back to smoking. And then I was a dual user for a long time. And finally, 2018, I just put it all down and said, I'm just going to vape. And, you know, I went through, you know, a bunch of different setups and RTAs and RDAs and sub ohm tanks until I finally found something that worked. And once I found that, I was able to finally not smoke at all. And then came across the vapes do and, you know, met all those guys and got into the discord and you know, started really paying attention to all the advocacy stuff. And, you know, people do have to take a stand and you have to speak your mind about this kind of thing, you know, and it's not, you know, I don't like to necessarily debate people on, you know, if they're right or wrong. I think everybody has their own opinion, especially about this stuff, but it is something that needs to be talked about. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of people don't understand is, you know, I can disagree with you, but we're still looking for the same solution. You know, I can disagree with how you're going about it, but it's not that you're wrong. It's, hey, you may need to go about it a different way. And a lot of that I've kind of taken from what I do. Uh, I work for a Japanese company and they're very particular about things and they're constantly looking for continuous improvement. And that's one thing that I'm kind of taking into this advocacy is, okay, I'm looking from the outside in. You know, I'm not a reviewer. I don't sell anything. You know, I'm strictly, oh, sorry, I'm strictly consumer. And, you know, I can see from that side, which, you know, you've got other people out there that do that also, but I just wanted my voice heard from that side. And so that kind of got me into it. And, you know, kind of like I mentioned to Sean when I was on with him and James not too long ago, it's not, it hasn't made it that far yet. It hasn't made it to the South, mm -hmm. you know, where the Southeast, I know they've got stuff going on where you are. Yeah. Uh, but it hasn't made it that far, but we need to be ready for it when it gets here. We don't need to just kind of sit back and say, okay, well, it's not here yet. I'm okay. Well, you're not because it's going to eventually get here and you need to be ready for that. And that's one reason that I'm so outspoken about is because we need to start getting prepared. You don't want to be, you know, sitting there on your couch saying, oh crap, they're about to do a flavor band. I guess I need to get up and go. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to be there before they even get finished writing the bill so that you can voice your opinion to them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You, you definitely have to be ready and you can't, you can't just sit around and wait for it because you sit around and wait for stuff to come to you. It's going to come to you faster than you thought it did. So exactly. That's one big thing that you're really going to have to pay attention to. And that's something I really like about you, man, is that you're always ready to sit there and talk to about advocacy. You're not, you're not always going to sit back and wait for an opinion to or for something to come up. Like I've seen in the discord, they'll be talking about just, Oh yeah, new setups. And you're like, Hey, did you hear about this new law? And you'll start talking about <laughs> it. I mean, it's, it's great that we have people like this that are just consumers. Cause I mean, I, I didn't find the vapes do and then start getting into advocacy. I've been, in, or I've been trying to mess with advocacy before I got towards uh, more towards the vapes do, but I've got led on to it probably for the same reasons you did is the continuous improvement our company man we're we here lately we've been trying to do a lot of continuous improvement stuff and i've been like one of the big main major keys to start it, uh, with it and i've been one of the main roles and that's one thing i think that might have 
help me out with this more is that I already have that mindset at work. So it's like, why not put that into everyday life? Yeah. Same here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, it helps out a lot definitely with that for sure. But, uh, so, uh, what it? Oh, so you, you were talking about how you, uh, started vaping and everything. What, what was your first setup? I know you showed me that earlier, but you still the have it around. Here? Yeah, it's right here. It was a, uh, Kanger tech. I think it was called a ego twist mm -hmm. with a Kanger tech Jenny tank. Man, so I put it back together not too long ago and threw some salt Nick in it and it actually still worked. Dang. So the battery charged and everything. So now it just sits over there. Yeah. I got, I got one of, uh, <coughs> I have an, uh, older mod. I have my Vamo V2 that I used to stack batteries in and everything before stacking mm -hmm. in mech mods was a thing. And man, I, I, I tried using it the other day and I forgot that the, uh, uh spring is burnt out on it so i got i might try to get that one fixed up and use it yeah i found my first sub ohm tank not too long ago it was in a box in my attic the uh aspire atlantis mm. yeah i got, I got, I got one of those yeah i had that on a uh cloud pour mini and you know we're vaping at 20 watts thinking we're all you know wow i'm at 20 watts Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, remember, I remember getting my first rebuildable RTA. I got the, uh, it was after Kanger Tech came out the Pro Tank, they came out their bigger one. I think it was a seven mil Pro Tank. It was like yeah. a Pro Tank Plus or something. And then it had a little itty bitty thing where you could barely put a round wire build in it. It was uh, one of the coil heads, but it was hollowed out to where you could just put whatever build you want in there. And mm -hmm. I found that the other day. I was like, you know what? I might have to pull that up for a retro vape just, just to show everyone how, how it was back then. Because, I mean, everyone that I vape that vapes at my work, they're they're used to the new stuff. I, I, I was talking to one of my buddies who vaped up there. Doesn't vape no more and doesn't smoke or anything, but he used to. He's like, yeah, man, you remember building and having to, and like using like a Chi Yu and using all this other stuff. I was like, dude, no way. You you remember those days? <laughs> he's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah, it was. It was different times. All these people, they got sub ohm tanks now. They don't care about that. Yeah. Yeah, the casual vapor. Mm -hmm. And speaking of casual vapors, that's one of the topics I know you really want to bring up mm -hmm. is what, what was this? You you want to you want to talk about how you how do, how do we think we can bring in the everyday vapor that just goes in and gets the coil once once every three weeks and a bottle of juice every two weeks right. what, what was your uh thought on how we can do that and it's it's tough because there's a thin line you know like we were talking about there's a very thin line there you don't want to come across preachy but you want to you want to be able to convey to this person hey look this is saving your life so this is something that you have to fight for but if they're not in the mindset to kind of accept that, it's going to be tough because a lot of times, and you know, Sean Typhon's in the chat, he'll, he'll speak for it because we've talked about it before. They come in, they say, I want my juice. I want my coal. Thank you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. And you know, you don't want to say, Hey, Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me talk to you for a few minutes. Well, I don't have time. I don't have time. And it's, it's there's something that we have got to come up with to be able to include those people. Because if you look at the ratio you know, most of us here, you know, you and me and most of the people in in Discord, we're hobbyists. You know, we don't buy something because we need it. We buy it because we want it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a big difference between what we're doing and what they're doing. Oh, yeah. Not not the actual uh, act of it, but, you know, how we operate is completely different. And I have not figured out a way how to include them. And I think that's a brainstorm idea that we all need to come together and we all, you know, especially, and, you know, not just us in the discord, but everybody, you know, you got to find a way to get through to these people of how important this is and how that changing from smoking to vaping has saved your life. Yeah. You know, that's what they have to realize. You know, this saved your life and now they're trying to take it away from you. What are you going to do about it? Yeah, you know, that's that's how it was presented to me. And it's like, oh, no, uh -uh. no, you're not taking it away. I'm going to do everything I can to keep you from taking it away. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's definitely something that's 
honestly, those are the people who should be more scared of it because they're the people who just converted. And it's, it's like you, you just converted, you just found this thing that's saving your life. So they should be the people who are more interested in it, but they're the Mm -hmm. people who don't look it up as much because if, if they're the people who go into the vape shop and just get that one coil and they get that uh, one bottle of juice or they got maybe got three bottles that are three flavors that they like and they just stick to those three. No offense, they're uh, vapor swagons, but there's tons of people out there. I mean, I was one of them. Me and my buddy, we went through this. Uh, we had juices that we would always go to. One of them was Drops of Jupiter at our local brick and mortar. And we would go through that religiously. And then we had like two others. I think one was uh, uh, Holy Water and there was another one. But I mean, we honestly went through those those flavors like crazy. And it was just we didn't really care about anything else. It's just, okay, we're going to go in there. We're going to get our coil for our sub ohm tank or we're going to build our own coils. But that's the only thing we're going to go into the vape shop for is that. And that's one, one thing I really like about my vape shop is – before they sell something, they try to talk to people about it because uh, they have a lot of people who are like that too. And then they have a couple people who are hobbyists. But I mean, I live in a small town. So I mean, there's not too many hobbyists like me out there in my town, but there's a few. And that's one thing that they always do. And that's one thing I always do whenever I go. Cause I, I mean, honestly, I buy a lot of my stuff online and I mean, this will even kill online sales. So that's what another reason why I want to throw that out there for everyone to make sure you're paying attention to is because this is going to kill online sales and this is going to kill all your brick and mortars. Cause I mean, they, it might not shut them down immediately, but how long do they have, how long can they actually last is the question to everyone. And I mean, it, it's so easy. Like I, whenever I used to just vape one flavor, Oh, Hey, let me run up to my uh, local store. Or, hey, uh, I won't be there in time. I'll just send you the money. Can you just put in a bag outside for me and I'll come by and get it. It's stuff like that that you're not going to be able to have no more. You're not going to be able to just run down the road and grab a bottle of liquid or uh, coils or anything like that. And it's going to be even harder for you. I mean, if you order it from China, you're going to have to sit there and you're going to have to wait three weeks. If you don't have a coil inside of your uh, sub home tank for three weeks, what's the thing that you're most likely going to do? Go back to smoking cigarettes. Yep. No, I probably won't, even if all this does happen, but it's not about me. It's not about you. Sean, it's about everyone else out there. It's about all the people who still haven't found it yet. I know we. I sound like a broken record. That's the main thing I bring up is the people who haven't found it yet. It's all about them because I want them to have the same experience I had. I want them to have – I want the people coming into it still to have the same experience. I want everyone to be able to come into it and say, okay, have it the same way I had it. People with open uh, open arms coming right at you and saying, hey, well, let me show you this. Let me show you how to do that. Let me help you out with this. And that's the one of the things that I don't really like right now is that we can't – like whenever I started vaping uh, for the second time and I stopped uh, all tobacco products completely is – like they weren't allowed to really help as much. My local mm-hmm. vape shop, they still will. They don't really care. They're they're they they said the hell with the FDA. If they're gonna <laughs> come down here, they can come down here. But the thing is, is they want to help people out because they don't want pe- they don't want to see people going back to that trend of smoking cigarettes. Because I mean, if you don't know how to put your coil in or you don't know how to do a certain thing with what you're trying to mess with you're just pretty much going to say, I mean, I can't get this. I'm just going to toss it or sell it. And I'm not going to go back to smoke a cigarette. That's so much easier. All you need is a lighter. Yeah. And then that's it. So, I mean, that's one about my local brick and mortar and shout out to them. Freedom vapor in Venus, Texas. Shout out to them. Cause I mean, that's one thing that they do really well is it might be against the law, but they, they always say, you know what? It's, it's dumb that you're going to, you're, you're not going to let us help out the people who were trying to save their lives. I mean, it's not them saving the lives. It's the companies out there saving the lives by making the products, but it's, it's just crazy how they don't want us to help people save their lives. But we all know the big reasons behind that and everything. Right. And one of the, one of the things I was, or like you were talking about is how do you, how do we do, how do we think we can bring in the, uh, non hobbyist, the just the casual vapor who just goes in there, buys his little his pod or his coil or his uh, single bottle of juice. 
the thing I think is we what we could do is like you were talking about earlier is not get too preachy because I mean you can lose someone's attention real quick. Mm -hmm. It only takes about five seconds. So I mean, one of the big (laughs) things is just letting them know, kind kind of scaring them. You know what I mean? Because if if you if you scare someone, they're gonna listen more. Hey, you you know how many people die every year? Four hundred eighty thousand just from uh, smoking related causes. Uh, and then you start talking about other stuff about how people, how there's all these diseases that you can get from smoking. And then you tell them, Hey man, well, you just started vaping. Do you want to go back to that? Would you want to have the potential of your death being sooner than what it could be? Not being able to see your kids get as old as you, what you would want them to get. Right. And that's kind of how I do it. I kind of just to tell them, Hey man, well, I mean, I don't want to scare you or anything, but the vaping industry can, get thrown away just like that real quick and it's just crazy how a lot of the people don't really care about it though and it's, it's kind of hard to get some of those people to care about it like i've tried it with a lot of the people at my work and they're just kind of like yeah which whatever i mean i just started vaping it's not like i'm big into it. it's like no i mean it's something that's actually saving your life you kind of owe your life to this industry you you owe an hour out of your day or 10 minutes out of your day just to communicate about it to one person, five minutes. Yeah. I mean, even if it's just one person, like uh, I think it was James, uh, Frames Janklin said, is even if it's just one person that you're talking to, that can help thousands mm-hmm. because the word of mouth, or they could, they could go, they could actually go home and be like, you know what? I'm just sitting on the couch. Let me actually look up this vaping stuff. Oh, they said right. Royal College of Physicians. Yeah, let me. And they start looking it up. And then whenever they look at it, would you look at it? Yeah. yeah. Whenever they actually look at it, they they might actually start uh, researching it more. Like kind of like what I did. I was like, well, I mean, everyone's saying that it's worse for you. Let me actually research this. I start researching more. And I start watching more videos. I was like, oh, okay, well, they're all completely wrong. And that's whenever I started getting more of my facts in, and it it made it so much easier for me to be able to spread the fact or the actual true facts because I didn't want to be the person to be like, oh, hey, yeah, man, vaping is safer for you. I mean, it, it's safer. I don't know how much safer but safer yeah i want to i want to be the person who actually knew what it what it could help and what it uh what it won't help right and that's one of the things that helped me that really made me want to dive deeper and research into vaping but but do you have anything you want to talk about on that uh, yeah and and, you know you're you're talking you're kind of hitting it on the head there with and the other thing we want to look at is you know we have our groups of hobbyists and you know 99.8 percent of us are activists or advocates for vaping Mm -hmm. but you have to look at you know we have these little clusters of hobbyists all over and you know we're all trying to do our part and you know you take just take this as kind of a bad example but it's what's right on my mind you take the people that go to the bar every night okay those people are there they're the hobbyist drinkers Okay, well, you take all the casual drinkers and you take them out of the bar. Well, you've probably got maybe five people, six people, maybe even ten. Mm-hmm. But you take all the casual social people and put them in there with them. Think about how many more people, how many more voices we could have if we had all of those casual vapors coming in behind us and supporting us as we are taking the lead, not necessarily because we have to because we want to we want we understand you're a casual vapor you're just getting into this you don't necessarily know you know all the facts well we have we have it here we can fight for you we just want you to stand behind us in case something happens where if we get knocked down you'll help us get up yeah yeah that's that's one that that was also another thing i was going to talk about is or what I was going to bring up in the last topic of how we can help out and everything is I want to encourage everyone here that is in the chat or that it watches the replay or anything. Go to your, go to your, uh, go first, go research vaping, <clears throat> make sure you know what you're actually talking about and everything. I mean, most of the hobbyists, they all know what they're talking about. Most people who watch my channel know what they're already talking about, but go, go to the actual, your local brick and mortar. I'm not saying you got to go to 10 of them or anything. Just go to one of them. And everyone that walks in, just ask them, hey, do you know where vaping is going right now? 
And I mean, if, if you're really close to the people who work in your local brick and mortar, like I am, it, you're, they're not going to have any problem with it. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not going to be scaring off any customers. Most times I try to help them make a sale. Like, yeah, man, you, you really should buy that mod right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should do that. That, that was a cool <laughs> mod, but I really just try to help them out with what flavors they're trying to get. Cause I mean, adults like flavors and usually I'll say, they'd be like, Oh, well, what's your favorite drink? Well, what's this? What's that? And then they'll start telling me like, man, you should really try this flavor right here. It's, it's, it's exactly what you need. And most times they really like it. Or if I have it with me, I'll let them try it. But um, yeah, like, like I was saying is I would say if you, if you live near a vape shop and you're close to them, just go in there once a week, once a month, spend one hour in there. That's all I'm saying. Just spend one hour. I mean, you can spend a whole day if you want, but just spend one hour and go in there and talk to them. Like, hey, do you mind if I talk, you mind if I talk about advocacy to most of the people who walk in here? And most times they'll say yes. So, I mean, you just, because I mean, it's in the long run, it's going to help them. If they say no, then they're obviously not in it for the right reasons. And they're not trying to keep their company alive for much longer. So, I mean, that's, that's one thing I encourage everyone to do is just go into your local vape shop for one hour a month, one hour every two months, a week or whatever you want to do and talk about advocacy to all the people who come in because, I mean, it'll, it'll help out a lot and it'll actually be able to spread the word a lot more and it'll keep more, it'll, it'll keep it fresh, more fresh in people's minds if you're in there more constantly. Mm-hmm. Like I'll go in there and I'll talk about it for an hour every now and then. And then I, there's sometimes I'll just go in there just to hang out and talk to the owner and just talk about random stuff. And then I'll have someone come in and be like, Hey man, I remember you from last time. Oh, was it you were talking about the Royal college of physicians and they'll start pulling out their phone cause they want to get the actual websites and everything. And I'll tell them, right. give me your email. I'll email it to you. But I mean, mm-hmm. it's something that, you, that everyone could do mm-hmm. to actually help out. And, uh, yeah. And like Sean said, they, they don't, they don't realize people talk about vaping on YouTube. And that, that's honestly something I, I just kind of realized the other day is a lot of people don't really realize that you're like, there's all these shows on YouTube about vaping. And mm-hmm. that's one thing I really realized. I went to the, the thing on YouTube where you can look and see who all is live right at, at a certain point in the day and everything. And I didn't realize how many people go live and how many people talk about just random stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I think there was one, this guy, he talks about, he talked about how he got in a wreck that day. Or there was a live about uh, there was these people kittens out of something. I was like, this is just crazy. People just go live for everything. I didn't honestly, I didn't realize it. So I mean, there's no way that they're going to realize there's actual vaping people on YouTube. So I mean, kind of promote those people, promote the people that you watch, promote the people that you see as very appealing, because it might be something that could be very appealing to them. Kind of like that's what she said. You might want to throw out their show because that that's one of the most appealing shows. I mean, it's a show with nothing but women on there. And I mean, they're not going to be afraid of it because it's not guys sitting there talking. I mean, if you if you send them to go watch Jay Hayes' channel, they might have different feelings <laughs> than you than you sending them to go watch something like that's what she said. So I mean, just kind of promote some shows out there. I'm not saying go out there and promote my show or anything like that, but promote some shows that will actually make people want to go watch it and actually learn more about vaping. Yeah, and Sean said something else is they need to love vaping first. They just kind of like it right now, but fostering the love of vaping is the key. Yep. And once they start loving vaping, then they'll understand how important it is and how much it saved their life and how much of an impact it made on their life. Then they'll want to keep it around even more. Oh yeah. Like honestly, I can say I love vaping. I I, I will leave. I will have on my way to work. I'll have like three setups. And I will make sure I have those three setups, but yet somehow I'll forget my wallet and my phone. I get yeah. guarantee you. It was just the same way whenever I used to dip. I would always I would have a can of dip on me. But for yeah. some reason I could lose I could I could forget my wallet and my phone at home. <laughs> and I'll be like, Well, there goes that. I mean, let me turn around and go get go back and get that. And I'll still have like three setups in my hand or in my bag. I'll be like, Yep, I still have these though. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've done the same thing. It's it's crazy how much how much of a habit it becomes and then you just forget about the stuff that you take with you every day. Yeah. Well, I started stopping at the door and I'm like, okay, phone keys, wallet. Okay. I'm good. What I do is before work, I go to the gym after work. So before work is I will pack my bag. I'll have like all the stuff I need for the gym. I'll pack my extra pair of clothes for after work. 
and then I'll have all my vaping stuff in another pocket, and then I'll have my phone in my uh, wallet right there. And yeah. I always, I'm like, okay, let me check my bag. I do it every night, and then when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, okay, let me check it again, just in case I forgot one thing. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot. I need this. I need this with me. But yeah. All right. So the next topic I wanted to bring up was the one about how vaping is hurting, is harming the environment. And this one is three way jewel. Uh, three ways jewel harms the environment. One of them is jewel uses single plastic, uh, single use plastic pods. Jewel pods often end up as litter, and e-cigarettes contain heavy metals. And what I was, uh, if no one watched the vapes do last night, y'all definitely need to go watch it. Uh, I'm not trying to promote shows like I just said, but definitely go watch the vapes do just for what Joel was talking about yesterday. I didn't get to watch all of it. I was out for a birthday dinner and everything. And it, uh, we, uh, actually was, I, when I tuned in, I was, I heard him talking about what they could do for pod systems is, he said, well, I mean, if they turn in a pod, they can get another pod or you, they turn in a pod and they can go towards a credit like 10 cents or 25 cents, or you turn in five pods, you get one pod free and stuff like that. Or he even said, why not just have the people who are the manufacturers bump it up 25 cents. So if you're paying $5 for one pod, make it 525. And then whenever you go return a pod that you is completely empty, I mean, you're not going to do anything with it. If it's completely empty, just return it and then give them 25 cents back or put it toward the credit. And I thought that was honestly something that was a really smart idea. Cause I mean, it's just as simple as that adding an extra 25 cents. I mean, most people, they won't even, I mean, they might notice, but I mean, most of the people won't even notice. Honestly, me, I won't notice if someone did that. I don't, you really use pod systems no more, but I mean, I wouldn't. I would never notice that if they added twenty five cents, and that was just crazy. And uh, I mean, there's so many people going to disposable systems right now, and like the uh, was it the Stig and all of those that you just pretty much vape on, you throw the whole thing away. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's like six be, different kinds of those now. Yeah, and it, it's so crazy how easy and simple a company could help us out with this like jewel could help us out all the other pod systems just with using pods or just like stig all those companies could help us out by just adding an extra 25 cents or making a deal with a company saying hey well uh, i'm wholesaling you this i'm giving you uh 50 of them and i'm gonna give you 10 free so every time someone brings in five of them you can give them a free one it's just mm -hmm. it's so smart how joel worded it and it's just it's just such a easy, simple idea that it's like, okay, well, how come no one else has ever thought of this? How come the companies that are doing this haven't thought of this? How come they haven't tried to implement this? You know what I mean? Right. And it's, it's yeah. I mean, most of this is just craziness about how it, that the pod systems and all the pods and everything are harming the environment. Cause I mean, if you have, you mean, have you seen how many people, how many cigarettes, people smoke a day i mean i've seen people smoke one two pod pods a day i mean but i got a boss who smokes like three packs a day i know nick garrity said he used to smoke uh five packs a day yeah. i mean that's a lot of cigarette butts yeah i was and at two it, plus whenever i stopped yeah and i think ruby Roo said that she found one uh uh a cigarette butt that was like ancient and it doesn't decompose or anything so i mean it's right. it, it's it's just crazy how they want to call out vaping. I mean, they, they're trying to call vaping for everything. The epidemic that they say it's epidemic yeah, <laughs> and everything. They're just trying to call them. They're trying to call us out. But it's like if they go back and look at the big people who started why we wanted to vape or why this all happened is why aren't they getting called out? But we all know why. I mean, they they learned how to tax them and all this and that. But it's just how are you all going to come at people who are vaping and make minimal litter if anything but then you could walk through a walmart or a target parking lot and i guarantee you if you took the time you could find over a thousand cigarette butts and it's oh, like yeah. you can maybe find two jewel pods in that whole that whole time or two pod mm -hmm. systems or anything i mean it's just crazy how they think that vaping is so harmful to the earth and everything i mean and they, they don't really, I mean, it's it, most of them are zinc alloy and everything or plastic. It's not like they contain these heavy metals made of lead or anything like that. 
Yeah. No one's vaping on lead coils. No, I hope not. Speaking of vaping on lead coils, it's the next topic I wanted to bring up. Um, I mean, the uh, where the lady went into the courtroom, I believe it was, and she said, oh, yeah, well, people, people are putting uh, pneumonia inside of vape juice. They're pairing it with the nicotine so that way they can get a harsh throat hit and they can make it bigger clouds. And a lot of the people in the vape industry took it as a joke. I honestly, whenever I first saw it, I was thinking I was at work. I just posted, what the fuck? I, I think I took a screenshot of it and put that. I was like, are, are you serious? This is what this is coming to? Yeah. Like, it, it, it's crazy how much, and this is one thing I always bring up is, how, how can, if we lie to the government on your taxes, if you lie to a police officer or someone who works for the government or anything, if you're lying to the government, you can go to jail or get a huge fine for it. It's crazy how big of a fine or how much how how fast you can get thrown in jail just for lying. But yet the government can lie to us and it's like nothing happens. It's just like, oh, okay, yeah, it's just it's just okay. It's uh, I want to do a citizen's arrest on this one. Uh, citizens take it, whatever it is. I'm, I want to do something about it. It's so crazy right. how I understand they have all the power and everything and they they make the rules and this and that but it's just crazy how we can't lie about something but if they lie it's just perfectly fine and everyone just doesn't really care it's just yeah sure it's 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 whatever it's fine it's yeah. crazy I mean I, I don't I mean I understand why but I, then again I'm like well I mean why is it no one questioning this that's one of the big things that I don't see I mean, it, it's it's just all politics and all this and that. But that was one of the things I wanted to bring up is make sure. And that, that was one thing that really made me mad about it, not just because they're accusing vaping uh, industry to use pneumonia and everything, but it was mainly because there's going to be a kid out there. That's the first thing I thought. And every uh, vape show I've watched since then, that's the first thing they brought up too was there's going to be a kid out there who saw that video and he's going to try it because he wants to impress his friends or someone and make a huge cloud and it's going to end up killing them. Right. So, I mean, it, it's honestly, all because, I mean, it, all because of a lie because somebody wanted to be impressive or make a huge impression, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, just stupid. And I, I really want to give a huge thanks to the gentleman who went right after her. He knocked it out of the park and pretty much told her, okay, well, uh, I'm sorry y'all had to hear all this false science and false proof, but if you had any proof, please print it out and give it to me or give me the website and I will go look at it. But I've never heard of this in this many years. And it was just crazy how everything just kind of escalated and how viral it went so quick just because you're telling a lie. And I mean, it, it was it was it was just something I didn't think that was a good point to go through, especially with someone like that. And especially at a hearing that was being recorded to where people could actually see it. Cause I mean, it just made whatever company she was with just look completely dumb. And they got kind of pissed off saying, Oh, well, I mean, y'all had to go look us up because there's no way that y'all knew where, where she worked or how she got there or anything. And it's like, well, that was her opening thing is I'm such and such from this and this and that and that. And it's like, yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's just ignorance to me. I mean, yeah, and from what I understood, the company came out and said we didn't send her there. She was there up on her own free will. We don't even know why she mentioned us. Yeah, and that, that was one thing I, that I want to say too is they were talking about that, and that's what she said also is, I mean, you uh, you still represent your company no matter where you are. Like if I was walking around and this was my company shirt and I was out there blowing clouds in people's faces mm -hmm. and pushing people down or anything – Right. Someone's going to see my shirt and say, okay, well, that's the company he works for. Yeah. Let me make sure I don't ever go to them. Or like if it's a Walmart shirt and you work for Walmart, right? I mean, it's, it's easily going to be something like that. And that's what I want to throw out there to all the vapors out there. Make sure if you're wearing a vaping t-shirt, don't go around blowing huge clouds. Don't go around pissing people off because I mean, you're just going to make whatever company you have on your shirt look dumb make them look mm -hmm. like idiots and they might, you might not have any, any affiliation with them. It just might be that you just really like that company. 
So, I mean, that's something I also want to throw out there. <clears throat> yeah, always know your audience. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's one thing that I've learned in the here growing up and everything is always know your audience. Like I, I especially moving up in the chain at my work and everything. Yeah, it's, it's you always gotta know your audience. Like I know who now I know what they kind of meant. It's not you can't joke around, but it's know who you're talking to because if you're talking to a new vapor about something with vaping, they might take it as serious and mm -hmm. stop vaping because they think you might be actually telling the truth but then know your audience know okay yeah who i can joke around with who i can't who who i need to speak to about certain things right and there's always you know you have that normal area and then the gray area and then the no-go area mm -hmm. you know i always try to stop before i even get to that gray area yeah because you know you have black and white you'd never want to be in that gray area especially with anything that you're trying to save you know, especially with vaping, you know, if you're joking around with somebody about their shirt, you can go into that gray area all you want, uh, you know, but if you're something like this, I would stay completely out of the gray area. You know, I would state black and white facts. This is this, this is not this, this is how it goes. And this is how it doesn't go. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And it's always, and that's, that's one reason why I also said, make sure you ha you know what you're talking about before you start talking about vaping to certain people. Because I mean, if you do get that into their mind about vaping and you kind of don't really talk about it the right way, or you're kind of given false information, it's really easy for them to just say, you know what, let me go look it up. And they look it up and they see that you were pretty much lying about it. So, I mean, make sure you do know what you're talking about before you are going to go talk about vaping to other people. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I always do. I constantly am researching because I mean, stuff changes day to day. It, I mean, not everything's going to change overnight. That's one of the big sayings everyone says is, oh, it's not going to change overnight. But with vaping and with all these laws and the government and everything else, stuff changes overnight. So I mean, yep. always be up on your research, always be up on knowing what's going on around you what's going on around your community, what's going on around your state, knowing your legislators, knowing who's your representatives, knowing all of that. You want to make sure you know everything you can know about vaping before going out there and actually talking about it. Right. And if it, it like, you know, like I said earlier, it hasn't made it to me yet, but if you are in a spot where this legislation has not gotten to you yet, it doesn't mean not to contact your uh legislators and let them know how you feel about it say hey you know i know all this is going on california new york texas you know wherever it is going on mention it and say i know it hasn't gotten here yet but i just want you to know how i feel about it mm -hmm. so you're my legislator you speak for me so go ahead you know do what you feel like you need to do but here is how i feel and here is how i would like for you to speak for me yeah yep and exactly let them know how you feel about vaping let them know about what's what what vaping helped you with i mean i've heard so many stories about it helping people sleep mm -hmm. i mean i'm not saying like if you don't vape or if you don't smoke or any used tobacco product use vaping for a sleep aid but people who used to smoke cigarettes they used to have to wake up in the middle of the night my boss he <clears throat> my boss he uh he said that he wakes up at least every two hours to go smoke two cigarettes. And it's like, how do you get any sleep? He's like, well, I mean, I go to sleep late and I get about maybe four or five hours of sleep, but I wake up every hour, two hours, and I smoke about two cigarettes. I'm like, geez, dude, I was like, I sleep all through the night. If I wake mm -hmm. up to go use the restroom, I have a mod next to me, I might hit it. Yeah. Most times I'll just go right back to sleep. Mm -hmm. there's so many people who it's helped them with their breathing they can sleep longer and they can do all these other activities they can play with their children i mean that's one of the first things everyone talks about is how much more you can be with your children or your loved ones is you're not constantly having to walk outside because i mean vaping it's there's no secondhand effect to it i mean i'm right. not gonna sit there and blow my cloud in my daughter's face but i'm not afraid to be I don't have to be 10 feet away to be able to vape around her. It's, it's mm -hmm. just, it's such, such more of a relief. I mean, I wasn't a huge smoker. I was mainly a dipper, but it's such more of a relief that you don't have to worry about someone picking up a bad habit. I mean, 
you don't want to pick up vaping as a habit if you aren't a vapor or a smoker or anything like that. But it's you you don't have to worry about all the other precautions and everything because I mean there's no secondhand effect. Um, I mean it's 95% healthier and safer for you, and it just helps you in the long run with so much stuff. Like you, I mean there was one guy I saw he said to his uh, representative, "Okay, well yeah, I want to." Uh, I think it was Grim Green who brought it up. He said, yeah, I want to show this picture. And it was a guy who ran, I think, four marathons and a half marathon and qualified at the Boston Marathon. And he said he would never have been able to do that whenever he was a smoker. And he said, I've, I've been able to accomplish all this by get by uh, vaping. I've been able to start running again. I've been able to start reliving or start uh, doing what I love more. And he loved to run. So, I mean – he got to do the Boston Marathon, could have qualified for the Olympics and everything. And he's like, "This is something I wanted to show you." And the the person he the person who was representative that he put it on Twitter to pretty much said, "Oh, okay, well, yeah, congratulations on your medals for running marathons. I'm also a marathon runner. That's about it." He's like, "No, this is this is what I'm trying to tell you is I'm I'm someone who couldn't run marathons because I used to smoke cigarettes. People who y'all y'all approve of and people who y'all." are letting just slip by with everything mm-hmm. but yet you're trying to ban the stuff that's actually keeping people healthier and keeping people safer right and, yeah i mean and one of the things i i mean it's kind of off topic but one of the things i want to bring up is my buddy and me were talking about this not that long ago he said uh actually i think it might have been on discord i can't remember who it was with but might have been actually sean or I can't remember who it was but they were talking about uh about how we keep promoting cigarettes, but they're like, don't you kind of think that it might be the government trying to kill off people or not kill off, but trying to, uh, was it population control? So don't oh, yeah. you think it might be something like that population control? And honestly, I mean, that, that I, I was like, Oh, I mean, that does kind of make sense. I mean, why else promote cigarettes or not, not promote, but, but try to get away from stuff that's healthier and safer for you. It's, it's pretty crazy how whenever you think about all this, how corrupt the government might actually be or how corrupt they actually are from what we do know. But it's about what we don't know. It's like, man, they, there could be so much more to it that we don't even know that we are just sitting back watching and it could eventually rear its head and we know, okay, yeah, we knew it from, from the long run. But <clears throat> that was just a little thing I want to throw in there off topic. So the next one I want to talk about was the new bill in Cong- Congress Congress would destroy the vape industry. And pretty much this thing is going to absolutely destroy the vape industry. It's going to destroy everything besides wholesale. And this is a, a report from John McDonald. I mean, Jim McDonald. And this is pretty much going to destroy everything besides mainly wholesale. But, I mean, it could end up doing that too because – like Sean always says, it's not just the vape community that's going to get hit with this. It's also going to be the UPS, the shipping, uh, the, all the shipping stuff, all the people who from DHL, UPS, uh, USPS, all that. They're all going to get hit real hard with this because if they if they destroy one industry, you don't have to ship stuff out anymore. And that's one thing that the world is turning to here lately is. I mean, you don't have to go to the grocery store half the time anymore. You can get all the stuff you want shipped to you. I mean, Amazon has it where if you run out of laundry detergent, you hit a button or you run out of smart water, you hit a button and all of a sudden you have some at your door in in like two days. So, I mean, it's it's, it's not just going to be affecting us as vapors or as the hobbyists or as the new people who uh, just got into vaping, but it's going to be destroying a lot of the a lot of the stuff in the government which everyone who uh, who runs for uh, president that's the first thing they say is i'm gonna help with all this uh debt the government has there's gonna be so many more jobs we're gonna be so much more efficient and all this other stuff but yet you're kind of killing jobs because think about everyone who works in a vape shop once this rule goes to effect they're gonna have to fire some people to kind of cut down on costs that way they can stay open as long as they can. Right. And then the people who work in vape distribution places or vape uh, industries and everything, you're not going to need as many people to go to shows to kind of promote your stuff. Cause I mean, you're not going to be around much longer. You're not going to need many people in the warehouse. You're not going to need as many people mixing the juice 
or mix it or making the mods it's it's just going to destroy so many jobs out there not just and that's not even including the people who don't even work in the vape industry i mean it's going to like the, the, think about how many people at ups and everything are going to get laid off because of this mm -hmm. and i mean it's, it might not be the biggest thing to them but then once they get laid off they're gonna be like oh my god that's that that was a pretty big hit and i just pretty much lost my job just because one thing got thrown away that is healthier and safer for you but the government doesn't think it is that's one reason why we need to be letting people like sean all like sean and james always say people who don't uh the people who don't vape or don't smoke those are the people we really need to be talking to because those are the people who think that vaping is just as bad or even worse for you. Yes. Cause I mean, you don't see a cigarette blowing up and killing someone, mm -hmm. but smoking a cigarette in the long run is going to end up killing you faster. Right. The more, the more you smoke, the longer you smoke, the more you smoke per day, it's going to start killing you faster and faster. It's cutting down days, hours, years off of your lifespan. And that's something that vaping isn't doing. It's something that vaping is actually helping. It's making it to where you can live a longer, healthier life by vaping instead of smoking. So, I mean, I know you, I know you probably want to touch on this topic too. Yeah. And you know, you, you want to look at it and this is something that's kind of a comparison. We got a letter probably, I think it was last week where they were talking about one of our automotive manufacturers is shutting down one line of their operation one line one shift mm -hmm. well think about how many people that's going to impact just because they're not selling as well as they want to now this doesn't have anything to do with laws but they're shutting down that line because they can't sell them anymore mm -hmm. you know you got to look at it as as a whole you know they're not going to be able to sell their vape anymore so they're going to have to shut down a line because they're not making as many. Yep. You know, there's more people that are going to be out of a job. And, and it's just hard because, you know, and it's not just that company. Think about, you know, Sean just said acrylic manufacturers, wire companies, where they get their 510s, where they get their battery sleeves, where they get their battery sleds. Uh, you know, every, you know, they're the gold plating people that do the contacts you know, silver plating, gold plating, you know, people who ever, do see machines, right? I mean, exactly. Think about how many people that's going to impact. And, you know, the other thing it said, and I looked this up because you were talking about it and, you know, they're looking at that 21 rule. This is not exactly what we're talking about, but it's on my mind and I have to say it. No, go ahead. Uh, so they're wanting to take 18 to 21 out of the equation altogether. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So, but you expect, considering that youth is the epidemic right now, that 18 to 21 won't get them? Considering that people below 18 are getting them now? How is that going to make any difference? Yeah, exactly. It might make it a little bit harder, but believe me, just like everyone always talks about, I mean, not even just vaping, but beer, <clears throat> liquor. Yeah. I guarantee you everyone who's watching this or I mean, I might know maybe maybe a handful of people I've ever met in my life that didn't drink or smoke before they were 21 or 18 Gosh. or however, however old you have to be to do both of them. Oh, I did. I yeah. Go ahead and tell you I did. I mean, in high school, man, we, we had friends and we're like, hey, man, uh, I'm not 21 yet. I mean, even when I first started college, it's, hey, man, I'm not 21 yet. I um, think you could maybe uh, go to the store with me. Yeah, man, what do you need? I'm like, oh, I need some beer. I need a bottle of this. And they would do it. I mean, it, it's just as easy for all the kids now. I mean, it's probably even easier because of how, how much all of it is in technology. I mean, oh, yeah. You don't even have to walk inside. Most stores nowadays, you don't need to walk inside. I mean, you can honestly get your – no one do this, but you can honestly get your mom's card. Her – like uh, I know Costco and Sam's does this. You can get your mom's Sam's and Costco card, and you can honestly – go in there and order everything you want and they you all you do is you park they bring it out to you they load it up and you leave because it's already paid for what are they gonna do take it back because you because uh because you're not with an adult i mean yeah exactly they got their money they don't they don't really care yeah I mean, you might find someone out there who cares i mean i mean it's, it's just like going to a bar how many people do they actually id 
Because, I mean, I don't, I don't look younger than 21. My fiance, though, she looks younger than 21. Half the bars we go to, she doesn't get ID'd, and it's not even like we're a regular. Yeah. But it's like, how, I mean, like, how are they getting away with that? Selling alcohol to what could be a potential minor, but then yet you're going to do it to the vape industry and they catch one person. Or, I mean, it's more, I know it's more than one person, but you catch a couple people doing it, but yet you know, they're not looking at the bigger picture. Right. There's so many more epidemics out there. Uh, and I mean, it's just, there's so many more epidemics out there than what they want to put their eyes on. Right. I know this gets way off topic from what, or gets a little bit off topic from what we're talking about, but like everyone always brings up the opiates or opioids. There's so many people who are addicted to drugs. That's one of the things. There was a day where Sean Typhon and M Turk, and I think it was uh, Vinyl and Vapor Eric. Those three were posting like crazy on Instagram, and I don't know what what it was, what they said, but those three got me fired up to like a next level and i don't i don't use my computer at home much so i pulled out my phone and i pulled out a notepad because i know if i type it into a phone i'm not going to really remember it and that's yeah. one thing i've always done is if there's something i want to remember i write it down mm -hmm. i always have to write it down and it helps me remember better yep <laughs> and and that's uh and like i would like i seriously sat there i went into my office i sat there i put put a uh, pad and paper next to me and I got there on my phone and got on my computer, started looking up stuff and not even saving links, but just looking up stuff and writing down facts. And I went, I probably had like five, six pages of just facts of what are the number one causes of death uh, to ages, this age, this age, that age. And I looked up all the ages. Okay. Well, what's the number one uh, addiction for these ages? What's the number one uh, way that people, have to go to rehab and all this other stuff. And I mean, you don't really see any people for nicotine. You see all these people for opioids and uh, for right. all these other drugs and all these other uh, alcohol and everything. And one of the mo more interesting facts was, is how many, what the percentage of people is before 18 that's actually addicted to something. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and they're not even talking about like being addicted to video games or being addicted to all this other stuff. They're talking about, people who are addicted to drugs or alcohol stuff that they're not supposed to be getting their hands on. And it's just crazy how, how much all this was, uh, how much all this was going through my head. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, let me just keep researching. And I just kept digging down into whatever facts I could possibly find about causes of death and addictions and everything. And it was just crazy how all these, all these, there was none, nothing really about vaping. But yet, all the bigger headlines, we kind of hide those, and we could put one industry up there because, oh, they they uh, they use uh, liquids in their stuff, and we we don't know what's in their liquid. Hey, there's three different things in there, <laughs> PG or there's four different things: PG, VG, and uh, nicotine, and then you have flavoring. Sometimes artificial, sometimes natural flavoring. Mm -hmm. But yet, you look at a cigarette, and every, that's the one thing everyone wants to bring up all the time is. Okay, well, yeah, you uh, all these uh, people out here vaping and everything. Well, and that's another thing I was I, I, I was actually going to talk about that, that affects all those people because I'm pretty sure uh, PG and VG is not. I mean, I know it's used for a lot of different stuff. Nicotine's used for a lot of different stuff. Right. But that's going to kill their company. Mm -hmm. That's. I mean, I guarantee you, the vape industry is one of the biggest things they use it for, besides other stuff that big pharma uses it for. Right. Like I know it's used in toothpaste and food and stuff like that, but I mean that that's gonna kill their industry. They're gonna probably, I mean, each company's probably gonna have to shut down a whole shift. I don't know about oh, yeah. where you work, but our first shift at our work is like 40 plus people. That's mm -hmm. 40 plus people without a job that can't support their family that has to go to another place that might be affected by the same thing. Yeah, I mean but, we have yeah, 30 we have 30 crazy. warehouse people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, that would lose their job if something like that happened to us. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I've I've had buddies who've been affected by stuff like that. I mean, our our, our company, we try to, we 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 are so versatile, to where if one like we we work with oil and gas, automotive, roller industries, all these other different industries. So, mm -hmm. whenever one shuts down, like oil and gas, right now, they're not pumping out as much in America. 
we're getting uh, better prices from overseas, so we're using that. Mm-hmm. There's still people doing uh, uh, natural gas and pipelining and uh, oil rigging and everything. I still got a bunch of buddies who go do that. They still have jobs, but there's so many people that were affected by that, and it affects my company as well. Like that's one thing I, our our boss always says, man. When them gas prices go up, I love it. I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. He's like, well, think <laughs> about it. Think about how much more money you make. He's like, go back and look at your paycheck back in uh, 2014, 2013. I was like, okay. I look back. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see exactly what you mean, man. He's like, you might have to pay a little more at the pump, but think about how much more money you're gonna be making here. Mm-hmm. Think about how much more we can do other stuff. How many more bonuses we can give out? How much more we can go out to eat with the company and everything? How much? How much new equipment we can get? How much we can service equipment? And that's one thing I never really thought about was how much more stuff we could do if the industries are just booming. And then right. once that one industry, I mean, we 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 cater to at least four or five different industries, and just down made our profits go down by half and it was so crazy i mean it still hasn't picked up ever since i first started working there it still hasn't yet to pick up to where we want it to i mean it picks up here and there but it's all about how much how much it's going to kill all the other people and how much more it's going to hurt them and i mean honestly if i if i lost my job today i have a little bit saved up but not enough to be looking for a job for a year exactly. and you heard the industry where it hurts multiple industries at once think about how much that is and think about how much every president think about what their number one thing is getting the company out of, or getting them uh getting the government in the united states out of debt and making more jobs making the uh making the nation have way more jobs and have everyone to where they can work and helping out the homeless helping them find jobs it's crazy how they say that, but yet then when they shut down something like this, whenever you think about it in the long run, how much it could actually hurt. Right. I mean, and honestly, it's it's not just going to hurt that. It's like we were talking about earlier. It's going to hurt the people who haven't found vaping yet. Exactly. All the people who are hobbyists, I can go underground. Mm-hmm. I'm fine with that. I know three yeah. or four modders. I know like 20 people who make juices at, at their – I mean, I want to eventually start learning so that way if it ever does – I can help people out. I know people who make coil. You can do. You could get cotton balls at Walmart, and you can just uh, what we used to do. You used to boil them and let them sit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's so much stuff I learned along the way, and so many people I met along the way. I'll be fine. Yeah. Sean, you'll be fine. I mean, everyone in the chat who's watching this will most likely be fine. But then it's like all the other people out there. It's like. They're not going to be fine. There's still going to be 480,000 people dying every year, and that number's climbing. Yeah. You shut down an That's industry right. like this, it's going to be over half a million easy. Oh, easy yeah. Over half a million. No doubt whatsoever. And that's, you know, that's what we have to find a way for our legislators and the people out there making the laws to see that from that point of view. You know, they're looking at it at the, you know, youth epidemic and that's all they're seeing you know they're they're not wanting to look at how the saving and you know the lifestyle change the health benefit you know oh i'm not allowed to say that but you know i don't care uh i don't work at a shop i'm just a consumer so i can pretty Mm -hmm. much say whatever i want yep you know there's 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 a way out there where we can have our voices heard and that's what we have to do and it's not just me. It's not just you. It's not, you know, everybody in the discord that we talk to day in and day out. And we have to get out outside of our box and say, hey, we have to recruit this person, you know, and we have to let this person know. And they have to be educated enough from us to where they can make that educated choice to say, hey, this is what I want to follow. This is what I want to be passionate about. I want to make a difference and that's where we are. But we as hobbyists, not necessarily as hobbyists, but we as advocates and activists have to get out there and make a difference. And a lot of people are just kind of sitting back, not necessarily the people that we hang out with, but there is a lot of people that still do what we do that are just like, "Eh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's like me. Like I can – everyone in the chat, me, Sean, uh, Typhon, uh, Frames, Janklin, we all do reviews. But we – we don't make. I guarantee you, I don't. I don't make no money off of it. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm not no Jay Hayes. Where I'm gonna. I, I mean, <laughs> never got to the point to where I could uh, charge someone or they would send me money to do a review. Hey, oh yeah, I'll, I'll send me some money. I'll do a review for you for sure. I'll take your money. That's one thing he always says. I'll, I'll take your money. Go ahead, send me the money. But I don't do this for the money. I'm not making any money out of it. So I mean, this is all. I mean. Time is money. I'm actually losing money by doing this. If I buy a product I don't like and I do a review on it, if it's $100, I just lost $100 because I don't like the product. I might right. resell it or I might do something with it. I might give it away. I might help someone else out with it. So, I mean, you might help someone out in the long run. but And then I'm also taking time to do the review. I have to record it. I have to edit it. I have to post it. And then I post it all over my social medias and everything. Time is money. I'm not. I'm not making any money off this. I, if anything, I'm losing money by you know, doing pay per views. But mm -hmm. I'm fine with that because I want to show people out there. I mean, and that's one thing that they said earlier is uh, no one. I mean, half people don't even know vaping exists on YouTube. But yeah. I want to show the people out there and my friends that I don't call every day and everything. I want to show them, hey, this profile unity is banging. I like this. I mean, it's amazing R RTA and everything. Or, hey, this juice is uh, terrible or this juice is amazing. I want to be able to show people because, I mean, the vape industry is so scary because you look at all the all the reports now, like stuff like this. I mean, they see that. I mean, they're going to, hell no, I ain't going to vape. And I don't, why would I want to vape? It's, right. I have to get that one away in the trash. Why right. would I want to do that? All that they're going to see from the mainstream media is all the negative. They're not going to see any of the positive that we can share with them. Mm-hmm. Just even even whenever they try to make it positive, like uh, the New York Times, they tried to make a positive uh, report about it. But then if you read the whole report, they still tried to uh, throw it in the mud. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, wait, y'all are trying to compliment us for this, but yet or compliment the industry for this, but yet you're going to still talk about how bad it is. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. They, I mean, the government, they like to contradict themselves anyway, but yeah. So, I mean, it's uh yeah and like james said and congratulations james frame janklin congratulations on your monarch i really want to congratulate oh. you i mean that that thing is beautiful shed time for yes. life hashtag <laughs> that is the but most beautiful, is beautiful monarch man. that's one of the people who i believe really deserves something like that people out there who People out there like Sean Typhon, frames janklin all the people who have dole dimes the people who don't sit back and say uh, or people who are even gifted anything for doing something. I mean, uh, uh, Danny Castle, he gifts some pretty mm -hmm. badass uh, Kennedys. Yeah. The, I mean, if I get to that point one day, I just want to thank everyone for that because I do it for y'all. But the thing is, I want to thank all of those people because they're not sitting there doing it for themselves. Mm -hmm. James isn't making any money, like I said. He does it for the community, point blank. He put that in chat. He does it for the community. And that's one thing that everyone that does reviews and everyone who's on the Discord who talks about vaping, we do all this for the community, for all the people who helped us, for the for the product that helped us save our lives and make it to where we can live longer. All of us do this for a reason. And for me, it's not money. I mean, I can throw as much money into this, and that's another thing. I can throw as much money into all these other organizations, and if they don't go do nothing with it, I'm fine with that. But it's just, I know I'm doing the right thing at the end of the day. And if I'm throwing money into the organizations and, every, and organizations and everything, like Sean said, for the love of vaping, if I do, if I throw money into organization and nothing happens out of it and a law still gets pa uh, passed, I'm not going to sit there and say, well, screw you guys. I gave you a thousand dollars and y'all did nothing with it. Right. There's so much out there that we don't know that goes on behind the scenes. And that's one thing I've really learned also with my company, being a supervisor, being a manager is all these people come up to you. Hey, man, well, did he get written up? Did he get in trouble? Is he going to get fired? It's, they they might not see. He might go back to work and act perfectly fine. He might go back and say, yeah, I didn't, nothing happened to me. But they don't know what went, happened, went, what went on behind the scenes. So right. I want to give a, a huge shout out to everyone who works for those places like Safada, Casa, uh, all those organizations, not, uh, was it not blowing smoke. Uh, I quit uh, smoking by vaping. I'm going to give a huge shout out to all those people 
because there's so much that they do for the company behind the scenes that you don't really see. But yet you sit back and say, oh, well, these people, they're slacking or these people, they just suck. I'm not giving any of my money to them. And we're not telling you to go out there and donate thousands of dollars. Or if you do donate thousands of dollars, ask for it back. But it's just you have to know that people have jobs. People have lives. Like there might be some time where I can't do this live and someone might get pissed off. Hey, I have a life. I have stuff, other stuff I have to do. And I mean, it's just it's just crazy how so many people will throw stuff in the dirt and talk trash about stuff that has actually helped so much. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to all the huge advocates out there, like Joel, I hope I get Joel on here one day. I want to get Joel on here one day and really rant. <laughs> I want to get him. I want. I want to get him mad. That's one thing I tell everyone. Is I know. I, I know Sean. I can't get you mad. I don't know if it's possible to get. I know I might be able to, but I don't want to get to that point. The people who you don't ever see get mad or see ever rant too much. Those are the people you don't want to see mad. And I didn't really want to see you mad. But the people like Poon Sauce before he got on here, before Sean Typhon got on here, mm -hmm. I said, okay, y'all about to get mad. They said, why? I was like, you're about to get really ranty, and I'm fine with it. Go on, rant. Yeah, do whatever you want. I, w I want that because I like seeing people get fired up because the people who are watching this, I mean, there's what, 10 people watching right now? Uh, yeah, I think Eight so. Watching right now, something like that. I mean, there might only be 10 people watching right now, but you light a fire under their ass by, sp by your words might be the thing that might get you, might get them up to actually do something about it and actually help out this community. Mm -hmm. And even if just one person out of these 10, eight people, whatever it is, you get one person out of this, they start talking to another. They start talking to another and another. And eventually it could be a thousand of people. You, you have to be passionate about what you love. If you love vaping, you have to be passionate about it. Got to have that passion. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, so mu there's so much that we could do just by our, our voice. Like Sean, like uh, uh, Shane said, he – he doesn't, he's not a, a reviewer or a, he doesn't make mods. He's not a, I mean, I don't know if you DIY, but I mean, he's, I don't think he's a DIY mm -hmm. or anything. He doesn't do any of that. Yeah. He, he's a normal guy yeah. who just goes and he likes vaping and he eventually turned into a hobby. But I mean, he, he cares about it, has so much passion about it that there's no real, there's, there, I mean, there's, there's nothing that I don't think this guy would do to save the community. I'm pretty sure if they said, Hey, well, we need, this much money i'm pretty sure he doesn't have the money to throw up a hundred thousand dollars or something i mean the, the one person i could see sean <laughs> the one thing i could see sean doing is for shane and sean and frames and lady louisiana and vapor swag and one thing i could see one of these people doing is i could see them starting to go fund me or starting to starting something to where we could start um, a fundraiser for stuff like this this is one thing I could really see someone doing. Like I don't see them looking back at it seeing, damn, well, that's a hundred thousand dollars. There ain't no way we're getting that. Let me just go wow. ahead and sit back. There's nothing we could do. What's up, Addy Tuning? See you in the chat. But I mean, I mean, there's one thing I don't see one of us doing is sitting back saying, well, yep, there goes vaping. We ain't getting a hundred thousand dollars. If you get a dollar from each vapor, we're gonna have more money, more than enough money for this. Oh yeah. I mean, all it takes is the all it takes is someone spreading the word talking to people on the street talking to people mm -hmm. on youtube talking to people on social media instagram doing all these weird hashtags hashtags hell find the highest number of hashtags or wh whoever gets the most uh post hashtags start using those get the word out there about vaping and then mm -hmm. i mean I'm, all you have to do is do like a gofundme or a fundraiser thing and i'm pretty sure you get it all these people start donating a dollar and you start posting about it and more people start seeing it. It's going to go viral and people are going to start donating like crazy and we're going to have the money. But I mean, it's, it's just the people need to get up and actually get motivated to do it. I mean, right. it might take someone like me or you talking to them. It might take someone like watching M Turk or someone big or someone that's real little like me on YouTube it might take someone that's small or big to voice their opinion, to make someone really want to get up and actually do something. But it might take, but I mean, that's all it takes. I mean, we need more people like Shane over here. We need more people like him. I mean, he's just, like he said, he's just a consumer, just a hobbyist. But he's not afraid to come on here and voice his opinion. He, like he said, he's been on a bunch of different shows. 
appearing on there and everything, but yet he's he's still not afraid to voice his opinion. I mean, whenever he was on, what, what was it, the green room you were on not that long ago? Yeah, it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, the first thing he did is like after they got done, after they got to him, said, "Okay, well, what, what do you have you want to talk about?" First thing he did, <laughs> boom, advocacy. Yep. I mean, I'm not saying every show, every review needs to be based on advocacy, but it's it's a big thing right there to where you could just if even if you're someone like him. Just hey, well, let me let me look up a topic real quick that they haven't talked about, and oh, hey, do you think I can get on the show? Yeah, sure. First thing you do is talk about advocacy. If you have two hundred people watching you live, that's two hundred people that can go spread the word instead of one person right. just knowing the knowledge and keeping it in their head. Spread your knowledge. Spread knowledge. Uh, the communication is key. That's what every company says I've ever worked for. Communication is key. Communicate. Get out there, people, and let's start getting active. Mm-hmm. And you can give, you know, you can give, not just tell them the information, you can actually print it out and say, look, here is where I got all my facts. You can go check it if you would like. And there's other stuff on there that you may want to look into also. Oh, yeah. And I mean, even even at that, I mean, the, the world now is all about technology. Right. Hell, save the link and email it. Yeah. Or text it. You don't even have to email yeah. it. Text it to them. And yeah. it's, it's super easy to be able to spread the word nowadays. I mean, hell, even if you really wanted to, you could just pull up a, a fact from uh, the Royal College of Physicians or all these bills and send it to everyone on your phone. I mean, I don't know yep. how many contacts you have. I mean, I don't know if people are going to really look at it, but I mean, I mean, that's that's one easy way. Just send it to everyone in your phone and then see where it goes from there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, post it on Instagram. Everybody's got at least, you know, maybe even as low as 15 followers up to in the hundreds of thousands of followers. Mm -hmm. post it for everybody and you know a lot of people may repost it and then it goes from 15 to 30 to 100 to 100,000 you never know where it's going to stop yeah. that's the reason every time I see something that's advocacy related where it's like wow you know somebody else needs to see this I automatically go to repost mm -hmm. because you know there's people that follow me that aren't into vaping you know I have family members and stuff that follow me uh you know, and just friends from high school and friends from work. And, you know, I want everybody to know that, yeah. you know, with the facts, here's the facts of what it really is. Even though you're hearing it this way, here's the actual fact of what they really say it, you know, yeah. regardless of, of who it is, I could care less who said it. I just want people to understand that that's not really true. They took it and twisted it yeah. into what they wanted you to hear. And one of the people who's a big advocacy king when it comes to posting on Instagram, I think, is uh, Mr. Vinyl and Vapor Eric. Yes. And every time I see it, I'm like, he's not even putting out there huge content or not even trying to put like a huge message out there. It's just a little message. But you throw a little art in there instead of just posting something with just words, you throw a little bit of art. That catches everyone's eyes. I'm like, man, I got all these things, all these quotes, all these ideas in my head. I can't draw those, so I'm screwed. <laughs> so maybe I'll just start texting him or messaging him my uh, ideas for something, and then he could just start drawing them. But I mean, <laughs> here's my idea: can I have some art? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then, I mean, it's just like I don't want any. I don't want any uh, credit for it. But I mean, it's just it's just the way he does it is he draws something that relates to it, and then puts like a little one sentence quote next to it. Right. And it it, it blows up. Mm hmm. And it's just crazy how much it blows up because the people are mainly looking at the picture, but then there's, I mean, it's, it's only one sentence. Like you said, don't sit there and gossip or don't sit there and read the gospel to everyone. They're not going to church. They want to sit there and they want to hear something real quick. And that's it. Then maybe mm -hmm. that's how he's getting through to so many people is just by one sentence, one mm -hmm. sentence, one picture. That's all you got to do. You I mean, right. if you sit there and you're sitting there and you're preaching to someone and you on and on five, 10 minutes, I guarantee you one minute in, they're like, yeah, I got to go. Let me think of a way. Let me text yeah. someone. Hey, call me real quick. Tell me you have an emergency. Yeah. I mean, just one sentence. Hey, do you know where vaping is going? That's going to obviously catch them right there. Okay. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, well, where's it going? Yeah, I know I'm, I vape. Well, vaping is going down pretty much. I mean, there's, there's nothing we, I mean, there's stuff we could do, but we need to get out there and do it. What do we need to do? Well, I mean, all you need to do is just talk about why you vape. I mean, it's just crazy how how simple and easy people make it, but then there's so many people out there who make it seem like it's the most difficult thing in the world to talk about how vaping helps. 
Like, honestly, I went through the other day my uh, Instagram and everyone who vapes, I didn't see any kind of advocacy post or haven't seen any kind of advocacy post on their story or anything like that. I honestly went and unfollowed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, like the, the there was only maybe two vape models, like girls I've actually seen that would actually do advocacy stuff. And one of them's uh, just peachy. I mean, other than that, I didn't really see many people. I mean, I follow maybe one or two tricksters. I unfollowed all of them except for one of them. I can't remember what his name is, but he's he's posted a lot of stuff about advocacy, all this stuff about all the nicotine and everything here re- recently. I mean, I think it's turned him into a big advocate. I mean, I don't know if, if he's doing YouTube channels and stuff. I'm not, I don't really focus on that, but I know that he's done a lot more posting and reposting of people's stuff. And I mean, that's all it takes. It's like Sean said, just, I mean, you don't even have to make up something yourself. Just repost. Right. People are throwing some different hashtags, tag some people in it, tag some people who aren't vapors. That way we're not talking to a wall. I mean, that's one thing I need to do is tag some people who aren't vapors. Like I honestly got into an argument on Easter with, with my sister about something because she was like, she, uh, I think my nephew ran inside and he's like, uh, he's smoking. I was like, uh, it's vaping. <laughs> he said, uh, well, uh, what's the difference? And I was like, you don't need to know about this. And my sister's like, yeah. it's the same thing anyway. Said, oh God, here we go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean it was family too, so I could really tell her how I felt about it, and I was like, "All right, you yeah. the same thing. I mean, let me talk yeah. to you about this." And I actually emailed her yeah. the next day and told, sent her some stuff so that way she could look at it. Yeah, but I mean, she's a big health nut. So, I mean, it's it's. I mean, it, it obviously shows, like everyone says, is we're talking to a wall. I mean, the people who are yeah. even are super healthy, like my sister, and always runs and does all this other stuff and watches what you eat. They don't know that vaping's healthier. I mean, yeah. she used to, and the thing is, she used to be someone who smoked cigarettes back in the I day. Mean, here's here's another thing. I'm diabetic, so I have a checkup every six months. Well, my first checkup in 2018 was okay. My second checkup in 2018 was okay. My first one in 2019 is, you know, probably close to a year where I had been quit smoking. Mm-hmm. Well, she told me that my chest sounded so much better. And this last time I went, she was like, your chest, your breathing sounds great. You know, you sound completely different than you did a year ago. Yeah. You know, there I don't wheeze anymore. You know, I can take really deep breaths and I don't, it doesn't hurt anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? So, I mean, there's evidence there just from me. Now that's, that's nothing that you can really put on paper, but it's about sharing that. Yeah, and the fact that I, yeah. I guarantee you, you could probably smell and taste so much better. Oh, yeah. It's a huge difference. Yeah. I don't and, stink every day. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> not stinking. I mean, I, I now honestly, like, I honestly cannot stand the stel- smell of cigarettes. And with vaping, I have to vape at the smoking area at work. Usually yeah. I just go to the road because I'm, I mean, I can't stand it. I'm, like about, I'm not about to sit there and do something that's, 95% less harmful for you and healthier and safer for you. But then be sitting there and getting secondhand smoke from someone who's smoking a cigarette. Right. I mean, I, honestly, I, I try to I sit there. I talk to them a little bit, but I try to separate myself because I mean, it, it'd be pointless to vape if you're getting a whole lot of secondhand smoke and everything. You know what I mean? Uh, well, we have one lady at work that doesn't smoke and there's still a couple of people left there that do. <laughs> And one of the guys had come in and he walked through the office and it was like, golly. And I looked over at her and I was like, did I used to stink like that all the time? And she said, yeah, y'all all all smelled the same. And I was like, oh, you should have told me a long time ago that it smelled that bad. No, I didn't have a clue. Yeah, it's funny, dude. Speaking of that, we have a boss who, like I said, he smokes two, three packs a day he tried quitting tried vaping back whenever he was using like an ego twist and i mean i think some of these pod systems would be able to help him now but i he's too stubborn to want to quit but i sit there and i ag on to him all the time hey man i mean he's he's hard-headed stubborn likes to joke around it's like man you know you should really try it. he's like yeah it's all going to kill me so eventually i might try it it's like, you, it's like no it's healthier for you You need to try it dude but he like that's that's honestly one of the ways we know because we have all these bay doors and everything and he'll walk by a bay door and smoke a cigarette. And I'm like, yep, John's walking by. We look outside and like, oh, there he is. Or like if he walks to the office, you could smell the cigarette smoke. And then you're like, did he just walk by here? And they're like, yeah, he did. Why? How did you know? I'm like, I can smell a cigarette. Mm-hmm. 
as a thing back in the day, you wouldn't have been able to notice that because I mean, you probably smell like one too. Yeah, yeah, you never really noticed it until it's gone. Yeah. So we're pretty much going to start wrapping this up. Sean, is there anything out there that you want to promote or some last words you want to say? Or, I mean, plug your Instagram, plug your anything. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Go ahead and talk. Uh, about it. You know, follow me on Instagram, Shane Oakley underscore SCFC. Uh, you know, really get out there and be an advocate, be an activist, if not for anyone else, for yourself. You know, make a difference. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. And I know most of the people probably watching now, you know, they're hobbyists like us. But if that one person that you talk to can talk to another one and one voice can turn into a million voices. And that's the biggest thing I want to get across is it's not just about you. It's about everyone that you could possibly impact, you know, share that love of vaping like Sean had mentioned you know we have to get these people to love what they do and love and understand how much this has impacted and saved their life as a whole mm -hmm. so thank you for having me on jay you know man i love it you know i love getting out here and being able to to talk advocacy and just bounce ideas off each other it really oh, yeah. you know with with all of us you know i'd love for us all to get together one day and have a huge panel of people and we just you know, constantly go back and forth with these ideas where we can change this and we can talk about this and we can move forward with this or I don't know. And I'm getting Start excited. recording the discord whenever it's at 40 people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that just, that gets That's me so cool. excited. Each person. <laughs> yeah. It just gets me so excited that there's so much impact that we can make, you know, not just as one person, but as a whole, you know, we mm -hmm. can, we can change so many lives and it makes me excited that, that there's many people out there that we could possibly save. Oh yeah. And let them know what the SCFC stands for. SCFC is stooge crew, filthy casual. Uh, if you're not in the vape stew on Facebook, join that and the vape stew group on Facebook. And in there is a link for our discord group. We all get on there. We all hang out, you know, you it's chat, there's video, you don't have to do the video, but you know, you can, you can get on, you can hang out with us. You can talk to us. You know, the, all the vapes two folks come in, you know, uh, Stan and Nick, Joel Swaggins, all those people are there. All the Omies are there, you know, frames, clown, uh, Swaggins again, cause he's on another show. Uh, love you Swaggins by the way. And, uh, you know, there's so many different conversations that go on. We have a lot of joking. We have a lot of good times, but we're a family. You know, we're all there for each other. Like Sean just said, the family is tight. You know, anytime, if you're part of our family, you're in our family. If you need something, we're there for you. You know, whether it's, you know, hey, here's my phone number. If you need something, call me. You know, that's all you have to do, you know. You know, we love each other and we love being a family with each other and <laughs> booty squad. Uh, <laughs> so, but man, you know, join that, come in with us, have a good time and, you know, be an activist, be an advocate, you know, make a difference in your life, you know, not just your life, but make a difference for somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to be a reviewer or any of that other stuff, but I can still make a difference. And I think people really need to understand that. And they, you know, they need to get out there and do that. And I'm yeah. rambling, so I'm going to stop. No, you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> I really want to thank you for taking your time. Like I said earlier, time is money. So I really want to thank you for spending your money and taking your time to come on here and talk to everyone. Cause I wanted to bring, I wanted to bring more people on like uh, Shane Oakley, because there's so many people out there who don't see, all they see is the reviewer. They don't see the people who are the consumer, the people who don't have anything to do with the industry. I really want to bring you on here. I really want to thank you for that. But uh, like always, I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be doing some reviews. I'm going to start doing two reviews per week. So make sure you're looking out for those. Go follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, go be my friend and uh, just make sure you hit this subscribe button if you did like this. But until next time, friends, let's vape on. Let's go out there. Let's be active. And Hey, uh, before we leave here, 
In about one minute, Mr. Poon Sauce McNasty, go over to his channel. He has Miss Angela Garrity on for to see what her story is. And I've heard a little bit about it already from her. So it's really uh, awesome. So let's make sure we get over there and we go uh, show him some love and get in that chat. And I also want to give another big thanks to Addie Tooney for putting all of those uh, good links in there. Everyone go check out those links for uh, uh, Royal College uh, Physicians and, and CASA and all that. Make sure y'all go check those out. But um, make sure y'all also tune into Poon Sauce McNasty's channel, and that starts here in the next minute or two, okay? So let's vape on. Let's get out there. Let's get active, and let's make sure we go out there and let's do something to save this stuff that we love so much and has helped us breathe, smell better, and to where we don't smell like an ashtray or an asshole. I'll see y'all later. Mm-hmm.